Assalamu alaikum. Hello and welcome everybody. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, me, I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful. You know, it's my favorite time of the day. Uh, hashtag LNT episode 24 of the special Ramadan series. Uh, so as I said, yes, 24, you guys only have six days left until the end of Ramadan uh, to participate and have your names placed in a, fla in, in a blessed uh, fishbowl, uh, as I like to say. But anyways, is there some sort of abuse going on at home whether there is or whether there isn't um, do stay tuned because tonight we're talking about something very important something very crucial that can benefit everyone that's watching us tonight but before that let's go and jump into what's trending and come back very soon so do stay tuned welcome back dear viewers hope everyone is enjoying their night tonight uh, now, you guys remember the, the, the video of uh, the Chinese glass uh, bridge that's in China uh, that went viral all over the internet? Well, China is planning to take it up a notch uh, where they're planning a bungee jump uh, off of that building. 260 meters high, 853 feet. This is crazy. If anyone is trying to jump off of that, uh, well, you have to wait. If, if you want something bigger, then you have to wait for the Grand Canyon Glass Bridge in August 2018. Because uh, that's going to be the tallest building, a glass building to, uh, for, for bungee jumping. So, guys, whoever wants to die, uh, just go there. Because for me, even if they give me a million dollars, I won't go. Because uh, I'm scared of, you know, 100 meter heights. But anyways, yeah. Um, listen to this. The next thing was trending. A guy from Texas, working in his garden, uh, he sees a, a rattlesnake. So what he does, he's brave, he's courageous. He goes, picks it up, and kills it. Decapitates it. He beheads it. What ends up happening, this guy is just carrying the snake, and the snake bites him after it's decapitated. The remains of the snake, the head bites him. And interestingly, for whoever is out there and is trying to kill a rattlesnake, kill it and let it go. Kill it and let it go. That's it. Don't try to pick it up and take it as a souvenir. No, because it will start to bite you. This guy took 26 doses of anti-venom just to get him healed, which is crazy. But anyways, this guy is uh, safe and sound. Now nothing's wrong with him. But, you know, uh, try to, 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 to play it careful. Don't, don't act too brave. And then you end up getting bit by a snake, you know, uh, be, be, be cool, be cool. But anyways, let's go jump into tonight's topic because it's very interesting and I'm liking it. Once again, we welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, all you husbands watching us tonight, yeah, I'm talking you. Now, tonight's topic is about you guys and how hashtag LNT is coming to discuss important things with you guys is it your wife the most closest and dearest person to you right you do your best just to make her happy right if someone was come if someone came to hurt her you try to defend her right if that's true then why on earth when something is bothering you brez or you get in an argument with her you turn into hulk and you start hulk smashing her is that what you guys plan to uh, on, on how you want to run the house or be the authority in your house? Is that how you should be? You want to be the head of your household? Well, tonight, I want to talk about something very important. Tonight, we're trying to talk about domestic violence and its relation with Islam and how Islam looks at it. So, hashtag LNT's question for the night is, does Islam permit domestic violence? Basic question. Does Islam permit... Or does it not? All you have to do is participate by picking up the phone, opening the, unlock your phone verse, uh, opening WhatsApp, dialing the number shown right now, plus 9647740671836. And let us know if you think Islam does encourage domestic violence, let us know why. If you think Islam does not encourage domestic violence, also let us know why. One important thing to keep in mind, as I mentioned before, six days left until the end of Ramadan. So that means you guys have six days to participate, as basic as that. So I'll leave you 
for a quick break and to come back very, very short to continue talking about this very, very important topic. Welcome back, dear viewers. And once again, we do welcome everyone to hashtag LNT episode 24. Uh, the sirens are kicking off behind me. Hope everything, uh, everyone's all right. Uh, but uh, tonight, as I mentioned, we're talking about domestic violence. And the question for tonight, for you guys to participate and let us know what you think. Does Islam permit domestic violence? Basic question. If you think it does, if you think Islam tells the man to beat the wife, tells the man to, 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 to hit the kids, tells the man to be the dictatorship or the dictator of the house, let us know. Uh, the sirens are, are getting closer. I hope everyone's all right. But, uh, you know, we'll just let it pass by. Um, All right, we're back. Basic question, does Islam permit domestic violence? All you gotta do is pick up the phone, let us know what you guys think. First, I would like to begin by, you know, uh, defining what domestic violence is. Now, domestic violence is, is any intentional and persistent abusive behavior towards the woman of the house, towards your, your, your spouse. I'll go through some examples on what kind of domestic violence are, are, are there? What, what kind of abuses out there that are considered under the umbrella of domestic violence? Number one, we're talking about name calling and put downs. So that's straightforward. You, 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 you give her names which are not nice, you swear at her foul language and so on and so forth. Keeping the spouse away from her family, from her friends, um, and not allowing her to see them or talk to them. Number three, withholding money from her, being stingy. You won't give her, you won't spend on her, you won't do anything to her. Number four, stopping a partner from getting or keeping a job, which is important, especially in the West and even in the East now, you know, a lot of husbands won't allow their wives to go to work or get a job uh, at the same time. Number five, actual or threatening physical harm and that's very dangerous sometimes because um, as we'll talk about later on um, if someone was to be in that situation physical and emotional harm are on the way number six stalking husbands if you're overprotective baba chill chill for a bit i know husbands that stalk their wives and i tell them baba you don't have to do that why do you marry her in the first place if you can't trust her? If she's going to cheat, she's going to cheat in front of you, behind your back, and she's scared she's behind your back. But if she's going to cheat, then Baba, find other ways. As we'll get to, you know, we'll give you a solution. But don't stalk her. It doesn't look nice. It doesn't, especially when you share it. Some guy actually shares it. Like, oh, I stalked my wife to work now. Chill. You don't need to do that. Number seven, intimidation. You try to intimidate, you try to be, you know, the, the tough guy. You know, try to be in the Avengers, you try to turn into Hulk. Chill. Really, really chill. Now, domestic violence often occurs over a period of time. It's not just one incident and that's it. No, over a period of time where victims of domestic violence experience a, a, a range of emotions, including, number one, fear, reluctance, uncertainty, worry, and fear. And those are... Th and stress, those are very dangerous for a woman because a woman is she's fragile. You know, she she, she doesn't need a man that that um, is is trying to act strong in the house. No, she needs a soft man, a nice-hearted man. Um, you know, Ahmed Ali has all of those. But domestic violence can impact um, upon a person's self-esteem uh, and confidence at the same time. All of which can leave an abusive relationship, a daunting and frightening one. Because it's, it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's one of the things that um, not all women, and not every woman, not every woman in the world doesn't want a man to create a daunting and, and a, an abusive relationship. Now, what are the causes or what are the effects of domestic violence. And this is very important for us to talk about tonight. Now, the effects of domestic violence, they have a wide range uh, as to what are the effects to it. In some cases, the impact 
of domestic violence is fatal. If you're beating your wife, you know, and, and people become creative in this um, as to how to, uh, you know, how to go down the road of domestic violence. They become creative with the names, they become creative with the punishment, they become creative with the beating, you know, it's, 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 it's traumatizing for the woman. And I hope that whoever is, is, uh, is, what is, is experiencing this um, to, to, to get out of that relationship or find a solution because um, um, it's, it's, it's really bad. But with that comes the not so obvious. A survey was done in back in 2005 and uh, the, uh, they surveyed a few countries, U Utopia, uh, uh, sorry, my bad. Utopia, uh, Tanzania, Ethiopia, um, Bangladesh, and other countries where they find a lot of women reported domestic violence abuse from their husbands or from their spouse. Now, there's only one country, and one country only, Japan, which reported to have less than 20% or 20% domestic violence reports from women uh, by their husbands. And you know, we know that the Japanese are in front of us every time. Uh, but you know, even in uh, God forbid domestic violence, this is uh, this is something to worry about and take into consideration. But we just received an audio message from Masuma from India. What does she say? Assalamu uh, alaikum. Well, under no circumstances, domestic violence against women is allowed in Islam. Uh, we have many examples in Quran and Hadith that describes the behavior of Muslims towards husband and wife. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O believers, treat women with kindness even if you dislike them. It is quite possible that you dislike something which Allah might yet make a source of abundant good. This verse is from Surah Nisa, ayat number 19. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Maqsuma from India. Let's uh, let's write her name down uh, into the fishbowl. Maqsuma from India. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Maqsuma from India, for joining us tonight. First name to go into the fishbowl uh, today. Now. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, there, there are a lot, a name came out wrong. Well. Um, there are a lot of um, issues going on with domestic violence. Not only the woman is um, affected by domestic violence, the children are also affected by it. The rates of children being abusive and juvenile rates, they're four times higher than the regular person who. Uh, uh, the, the ones who witness violence in a home are four times higher than regular children. Though, so when they grow up, it's four times for them to actually commit um, violence, commit crimes, and so on and so forth. So it's very dangerous um, for a child to be in, an, in, in, in a very abusive relationship with the dad and the mom. You know, if, if, if the dad is abusing the mom, and the child sees it or hears it, they're gonna suffer a lot. First, from anxiety. Second, from depression. That child will feel depressed and honestly, he will have the wrong image of a proper husband when he grows up. Because, you know, the perfect role model in the house or the only role model, the male role model in the house is the dad. And if the dad is abusing the mom, if he's hurting the mom, he's beating the mom and the kid sees it, Imagine what goes through the kid's head. Just imagine that. And that's very dangerous for the kid to witness. Now, I would like, uh, so before we do that, let, let's, uh, let's uh, pull up this uh, text message we got. Yasin from the UK, he says, uh, no it does not, so Islam does not, uh, because it is haram to hit your wife. Uh, it is mostly cultural uh, customs that causes domestic violence and not the religion of Islam. Uh, Yasin from the UK. Thank you very much Yasin for joining us uh, tonight. The second name 
going into the blessed fishbowl. Now, I would like to go uh, and check out what the expert has for us today, Sister Barak Hussain, uh, aka the Muslim counselor psychotherapist from Ottawa, Canada. Let's go see what she has to say about domestic violence. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. This is Sister Barak Hussein, the Muslim counselor. I'm a registered psychotherapist. When we talk about violence, domestic abuse, automatically think about violence against women. The reality is it's also violence against men, but we don't really hear much about that as not many men will come out and talk about it. But in general, the statistics show that it is women who are experiencing this type of violence. So when we hear the word domestic violence or abuse, you automatically think about physical abuse. But abuse doesn't necessarily just mean the physical by hitting or beating. It could also be mental, financial, psychological, sexual, social. It de depends on a whole range of what you know the circumstances are. So when we talk about this issue, it's very sensitive, obviously, within our communities, especially within the Muslim community. The reality is, just like other mental health issues, the effects of violence and domestic abuse and all of that, it is happening. And we're not really doing much about it in terms of supporting. We've started to talk about these issues, including this one. And so let's discuss this a little bit more. So let's take a look at some of the causes of why this type of violence occurs in the home. So there's many reasons. And one of which, and the most predominant one, could be because there's a violence like a cycle right so this circle the cycle rather that is hard to break where somebody grows up in a household where they are experiencing this type of violence and believe this is the way how to treat each other whether it's you know a man abusing a woman or a woman abusing a man and so this child grows up in this um, environment believing this is how you're treating other people and they will continue this type of behavior with their partners and people around them as well so that could be it it doesn't matter how rich you are how poor you are it doesn't matter how educated or uneducated you are, what kind of background you come from. This is experienced in all backgrounds, unfortunately, and I've seen way too many clients from different backgrounds that have disclosed this type of behavior from people that you wouldn't expect as well and from people, for example, that you would think who are teaching other people about it or it could be religious uh, scholars or it could be people in high positions who are still inflicting this kind of violence against their children and women or vice versa in terms of the woman inflicting this upon her family. So it's happening. So many different causes and we can't really bring it down to dynamics such as poverty or education, although this is this is where the statistics show that, you know, this is happening. Um, I would bring it down to power dynamics, low self-esteem, low self-confidence. And so when one person um, doesn't feel confident in themselves and happy within themselves, they exert that power dynamic to making other people feel bad so that they can feel better. So whether it's a man doing that to his wife or a woman doing that to her husband, it happens like that. And of course, the cycle will continue as the child is observing this type of behavior. So these are some of the causes of this. Now, in terms of the effects, the effects are detrimental. Again, it's a domino effect, right? So a young child who is observing this, growing up in this home where this type of behavior is modeled to them, they will continue this behavior, but it will also impact them in the sense that it could affect their sense of self, their world in terms of the trust of the people around them when they're seeing this type of abuse and violence. It's hard to trust other adults. It's hard to trust, let's say, a woman if it's a mother that is hurting a child or if a father is hurting a child. So that, that will also affect their dynamics. It will definitely affect their mental well-being. You will find children, let's say, at school who are very drawn and isolated or they may be bullying or acting out as well. So this is some of the effects that you see. Now, let's say this violence is against women. The woman will also exhibit behaviors of fear, um, being isolated, not, let's say, interacting within the community, always have excuses if there is violence shown on her, bruises. Um, so th there's a lot of these types of behaviors and, and we know this. I mean, we just need to look around within our communities and we can recognize to see some of this behavior exhibited. 
and it is frightening as well. We don't really see it much in men exhibited like it is in women, um, but men will disclose to close friends and I've also I've heard this from clients as well as people in the community who reach out who have experienced this type of abuse at home, um, that how it affects them. You know, they don't really feel respected. They don't really feel that they are the provider or just respected in the relationship. So it can definitely impact people this way. They can't reach their full potential. They can't contribute to their society, their community. They don't do well at school. They don't do well in their work. And you can sense that around them, the lack of confidence within themselves. Solutions. I mean, I'm just describing a little bit. There's so much more. But in terms of solutions, this really comes with education. Like I said, it doesn't matter what background you are from, whether you're high class, low class, uh, you know, come, come from a rich background or impoverished, even, you know, education, whatnot. It, it doesn't matter. But in terms of figuring out the solutions, it does come with education in terms of teaching that this is not right. Looking at the impact and the effects of this to gen on the generations, right? So. Part of the solution is to have more awareness within our communities so within the muslim community for example yeah we've heard about you know some discussion within um, the context of violence but not necessarily talking about solutions and how to prevent it for example you have a family where they're dealing with this and a woman needs to get away from this household yet she's not supported within the community it's like be patient or you know the community leaders of the sheikh will tell her be patient and we know that you know staying home and being beaten and in front of the children how does this impact the children it's traumatizing for them she's supposed to be patient with that no or a man who is also uh, you know is afraid of leaving the household because of the children and whatnot and he's in a situation where he's unhappy and he's being disrespected and abused from his partner again we said abuse doesn't necessarily mean physical it could be disrespected and abused from his partner again we said abuse doesn't necessarily mean physical it could be emotional it could be psychological it could be financial and is a little bit different between men and women although I have heard stories of women also inflicting physical violence upon men so solution is about being more aware bringing awareness into our centers into our communities into the families and really stopping it when somebody comes to you and you sense this is happening um, and and somebody does come to you and tell you about this support them don't judge them Provide them resources where they can get legal supports if they're, you know, talking about finding a safe space for these people to, to get away from the, the violent situation because it can really get out of hand sometimes to the point where unfortunately, and we've had cases and stories where a woman would leave with her children, a violent partner, and uh, she had no support from the community, no financial support, no emotional support, and felt that she had to go back to him because he was their sole provider. Going back to him resulted in her death and the children's death because he turned violently murderous and he killed them. So unfortunately, these things happen. We don't want it to get to that level. From an Islamic perspective, again, I'm not a scholar, but this is basic knowledge that we all have and we can easily access this knowledge. There's nowhere in Islam where it says we can inflict violence upon another human being and especially within our relationships, whether it's a man to his partner, to his wife, or a woman to her husband, or towards children and our elderly as well. And this is exemplified in the gentle manner with the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt salam, the men of the household, how they treated the women of their household, whether it was their wives, their daughters, their sisters, and we just have to look at their prime example of how they respected and honored their women. <laughs>
as soon as we talk about Islam abuse, Islam domestic violence, Islam beating, Islam hurt, you know, the people who are educated, they're going to bring up a verse. The haters will try to retaliate and say, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chapter 3, chapter 4, verse 34, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're going to say that your God says in that verse that go beat your wife and the men are superior to women. Are you really understanding the verse in that way? You know, for me, as a Muslim, I'm not trying to defend, but I'm just trying to say the true facts about my religion. Two different things. Now, if we were to go and examine the verse, if we were to go and read the verse and clear some of the misconceptions that it revolve around the verse, the verse begins, Al-Rajal Qawamuna Al-Nisa. Qawamun doesn't mean superior, superiority. No, it doesn't. It means men are the protectors. A person who is Qa'im on his house, Qa'im al al bayt, it means he is the sustainer of that house. He's the one that suffices the women of her needs, suffices the kids, suffices everything that they need. Now, let's read out this verse very quickly. It says, men are the protectors and, ma uh, and maintainers of women because Allah has given the one more strength than the other because they support them from their means. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient and guard in the husband's absence what Allah would have them guard. What am I talking about? We'll get to explain it later. As for those, as for those women on whose part you fear disloyalty and is ill, -condu Ill uh, conduct, con conduct, admonish, admonish them first. Second, it means rebuke them. Second, don't share their beds. So if it happens a second time, don't share beds with them, meaning don't sleep with them. And last, beat them. We'll get to talk about later on, but in between brackets, uh, lightly. But if they return to obedience, seek not against them any needs of annoyance. For Allah is the most high and great. Chapter 4, verse 34. We'll explain this, but after we read this text message from... Razia from Norway, we have to look at the way that Prophet Muhammad treated his wives. He was never ill-mannered towards his wives, even though a couple of them were disrespectful towards him. Thank you very much, Razia, once again for joining us tonight in tonight's episode. Uh, your name is already in the bowl, so we'll give the chance for others to participate. Uh, as well, we're getting a few uh, Facebook comments on uh, Facebook. Uh, coming in uh, right now. They're saying uh, something wrong with the sound. We do apologize. Uh, there is a, a kind of malfunction going on uh, with the with the sound system. So inshallah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to fix it out uh, very uh, soon inshallah. But if we were to explain that verse that we just mentioned, chapter 4 verses uh, 34, first and foremost, there are two clarifications for this. Number one, it doesn't apply to any woman. Only those women who are rebellious to their husbands. Rebellious doesn't mean that when you get home, you don't see the food ready. When you tell her, go do the dishes, she says, yeah, wait in like five minutes. Or, you know, go, go do the laundry, she says, yeah, in like 10 or 15 minutes, tomorrow, whatever. That doesn't mean she's rebellious. What rebellious means is that whenever you tell her to go on the right path, she goes astray. And that's very important to keep in mind. Number two is the problem of, of hitting. In the Quran, in that, ch in, in that verse right there, it says the men should beat the wives. If you were to go and read the narrations and how, you know, the Quran, if, if any ordinary person was to read it, they won't understand the majority of the verses. Some are straightforward, yes. Some we have to go and refer back to the Ahlul Bayt and refer back to the traditions. Now, what in the traditions, what do they say that Ahlul Bayt say that don't beat them, don't leave bruises, don't leave broken bones, don't bruise their face, beat them lightly. Symbolic tapping of the hand. So, it's a way where you say that you're unhappy with what she's doing. That's it. If she does repeat it again, don't sleep with her. If she doesn't repeat it again, then that's it. Just, just end that relationship. Because an unhealthy relationship will destroy your life and her life at the same time. So therefore, 
Islam does not permit domestic violence anywhere and anywhere else. So that's it for tonight. If you're sitting next to your wife and if you're not, if you're sitting next to her, give her a hug, give her a kiss on the cheek. If you're not, shoot her a text message. It's from hashtag GLNT, coming her way um, and everyone's way, inshallah. Hope everyone has a healthy relationship because honestly, that's what hashtag GLNT wants, everyone to have a healthy relationship. We love everyone joining us tonight and everyone who was joining us and has joined us in the previous episode. Remember, uh, and remember to call in and participate in the upcoming episodes, 2 a.m. Karbala time, 12 a.m. London time, 7 p.m. Washington DC time. Do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.